Hi everyone, you've probably been missing my face a little bit on the social media platforms and you've probably seen my business partner Aaron Wybrow jumping in a little bit more. So I thought I would get my face out there and why not start with a little bit of an interview of Aaron. Uh, so Aaron, I've seen you've been a little bit stressed out uh, over the last week or two um, over a quite a few files in fact and there's a little word out there called in-flight applications and the impact of increasing interest rates so um, can you talk to me a little bit about the the pain points that you've been having uh, with these applications and what solutions you've found for your clients on these yeah this this um, in-flight application rules uh, are a thing that when you submit an application into a bank, they're going to have their normal turnaround time. They're going to instruct their valuer to do it, do the valuation. And at the moment where we've had some interest rate rises every month for the last three months, banks treat that differently. So we have serviceability rates, which is a floating interest rate over the actual interest rate you have. So when the interest rate rises, every bank is treating that very differently. So I had success with a client that I got frustrated about. We got into one bank um, and their in-flight application rules is that it had to get to conditional approval to be able to lock in that assessment rate prior to them reassessing it with the extra interest. So a word of warning, if the interest rates do rise within your application time, you actually have to pay that rate. But what could happen is that the buffers are all eaten up and you could get right to the end and it gets declined because the interest rate rose. But this is a, the frustration on my part is that the bank can take all the time at once and then they make a really funky decision at the end that they're going to decline it and I, or they're going to reduce the loan amount that you can achieve because the rate rose and they didn't pick up the file in time. And that's the problem. They don't pick up the files in time so they make the rules related to that service level agreement. They make the rules on when they change what their response is to the in independent RBA. So, and I've had many conversations with lenders about the independent RBA and I'm going, yeah, they are independent, but it is your response to that to impact your in-flight applications, which is the ones in the system. Right. So, for so my, what are we, yeah. like, what are you like, what are you doing for your clients? What are we doing for our clients? How are we protecting our clients who are coming in for new loans with new application submissions? Um, what are you doing to protect them from these issues um, that we're facing yeah. where <clears throat> lenders, you know, timelines are going out or, or, or whatnot? Yeah, so number one, from a company point of view, um, you and I talk about this a lot. And um, one of our um, office support managers is helping us find out what every lender is doing with the in-flight applications. So some lenders need to get the formal approval. Some need to get conditional approval. Some will um, lock in your assessment at application time and others will look for any, if there's any material change like uh, job changes, pay rises, pay decreases, other debts that they find that they didn't have beforehand. They all come into the picture. Um, about how they're going to treat and assess your in-flight applications. So what we've done as a business, we understand the lenders and how they are treating in-flight applications. And, in, and that helps us with the timing of what we're doing. The other one is the individual applications. So number one, we're brokers. So we're not locked to one bank. So we may present you options to say, go to this bank, go to that bank but we always need to have a backup. So as brokers, we have the primary application we're going on, but we always have got a backup option. And that backup option was the one that helped my client because we went for the main one, they were mucking around and the timing was changing and we couldn't get hold of the right people. And when we got the right response, they changed the calculator. So we had to go to the backup option and the backup option had some nice specific requirements for the client so that we could um, they didn't pass on the whole rate rise when it was less than 70% that they owed of the property and were able to get the right amount of lending, even though it was a little bit less than what they wanted, but we were able to get a lot more than what that current one was. And the other one is individually, when we're assessing new applications, number one, I'm asking the client, what is the variability of their income um, 
or what is the variability of the property they are going to buy if it's an investment? So it might be that your employer is putting bonuses back in. It might be that you have pay rise opportunity. It might be you have a promotion opportunity and that's all variability to your own personal income or you might be self-employed and you can go find another customer. So I'm looking for that. And then I'm also using calculators that allow me to change the interest rate upwards. So some banks calculators don't allow that. Um, and there's some, some, you would have thought that they would be allowing that in the current climate, but they're not. Um, but there are some calculators where we can um, a model for three months in the future and put a 1% or a 1.5% or a 0.25 or a 0.5 on so we can give you the time you need with your figures locked in to find the right house. So I just want to unpack that mm. for a moment. Um, basically, uh, this is where we're looking at when you know your rate is um, you know, 2.5%, but you're being assessed at 5.25 or 5.5%. And we're allowing for, you know, 1.5% as an extra buffer on top of that yeah. as a, you know, worst case scenario. So this kind of um, is us looking at, we don't have a crystal ball. We don't know what the future holds. There's, you know, a 0.25 interest rate rise and then a 0.5 rate rise and then a lender comes out and says they're going to increase by 0.7 so there's so much variability out there and whilst we don't have the crystal ball we're not experts we don't see into the future like that um, of knowing exactly what's going to happen what we are experts in is broking it's finding the best deal the best option we don't want to be putting multiple applications in and affecting your credit file um, and, you know, putting anyone in that type of situation. But I think the take home is um, on that point is we might have an application in the system for you. Our job is to make sure that the finance you're seeking is in your best interest. So number one lender application is in the system and it's going but if it's not working in your best interest anymore we're looking at what can we do to help you to achieve your goal and this is where it sounds like for this client of yours you said number one lender fantastic let's roll with it it's now not working there's too many changes it's it's a bit of an issue this is plan b let's go with plan B. So it sounds like whilst a little bit of a pain point and I absolutely heard the stresses from you in the office, um, it sounds like you still were able to get a great solution for your client. Absolutely. And, and that's just getting it in and understanding the in-flight application rule. So if you've gone out and you've seeked finance and you've come back and they done everything and right at the end they say no I can't get you that amount of money or they um, are about to decline you on the loan that you're trying to get because you didn't have enough deposit please do reach out to us because you need to have more than one option and you need a broker that's got a backup option even when they've got the main application in. Sounds great thanks so much Aaron.